Okay, uh, good morning everybody, or good afternoon if you're f further east than we are. Um, my name's Chris White, I'm Director of Product Management for Indecision for the Charging Unit and Head of Business Unit. Um, what we'll do today is we're going to go through what we do for real-time charging and how it impacts customer experience and how really you could use our approach in the market. We're not dissimilar from other people. Um, what I'd like to do, if I go to slide one, is just to... Um, explain the logistics of how we'll go forward. So I'll do the logistics and then go through the agenda. Um, in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see a Q&A section. If you want to write questions in there as we go, what I'll try and do is answer them when I come to the end of the slide. If we can't answer them at that moment in time, um, we're going to take them down as a note and we'll email people back with an answer. Um, and I will try and do it at the end of the slide. It can be quite distracting otherwise. Right, <clears throat> so topics I'm going to go through going to look into the market dynamics of the world of real-time rating uh, and what's going on out there, the size of the market, how it's moving forward, pressures on operators and what you can do about it, and some market feedback. Uh, and these are, This is information we've gathered from lots of reports and customer interactions of our own. Then really I'm going to use the next section to go through the benefits of real-time rating, how you can add real-time rating to existing systems, both postpaid and prepaid, to enhance them without having to do rip and replacements. And then I've got two examples associated with that to highlight where we've actually done it um, and sort of give you a flavour of what can be achieved by using this sort of approach. So, slide three. Um, what I'm showing here is, is the general trend in the market. And we can see that uh, the first thing I picked out of this is there's a big sort of growth in real-time charging, which is the red bars on this chart. But the other significant thing is we're seeing a, a drop in prepaid business going forward into the rest of moving forward. I think that's quite easy to explain is we can see people might either move into convergent charging systems um, where they're having to replace both their pre and postpaid at the same time, not spending as much on their prepaid. A lot of focus at the moment on things like data and policy. So we can see the blue bar charts going up there associated also with active mediation with the emergence of LTE and the massive amount of diameter routing that's required. So we can see that from the talk really that I'm going to be addressing today is really the red bars on this chart. That's the sort of capability, although we can do the blue as well with the same engine. Uh, but I'm going to focus really on the real-time rating and charging aspects of life. Okay. Now, slide four is actually a model that was brought up by uh, Shatin Sharma this year, consulting. And how he portrayed this is... Um, the various graphs are basically voice, messaging, access, which I think really means data, and then over, over the top services. Now I've added the little box saying future, uh, and actually what I've done, I like the model, but I've changed the axis, as you'll see with the animation, to actually, if we put up the side instead of uh, revenue, if we put market activity stroke hype, so what people are talking about, what people are discussing, and along the bottom axis time, I think this model fits the market really well. So I'll just spend a bit of time on this and explain how we've done some more analysis based on this and other market information. So voice, I'm taking that as basically standard traditional circuit switch voice. Not many people talk about it. Um, systems do it. Some systems are good at it. Some systems aren't. They can be enhanced. But basically, it's almost you'd call a done deal. People aren't going to spend a lot of money enhancing their voice capability. But there's a, there's a bit of a sting in the tail, which we'll come on to in, in two slides time. Messaging, well, there's a lot of comments about messaging, uh, dying, all those sorts of things. It's still a very, very key service, still used an awful lot. And when you see the latest slides I've put together, it's still something that I see the operators being very focused on. Access, so data, well, that's a lot of discussion at the moment um, with people doing their broadband work, uh, dealing with sort of over-the-top services, using that pipe that they're doing and moving possibly to a utility type model. Um, and again, we've got some data we've taken from reports and we've added some of our own intelligence to it. And we can hear a lot about over the top services killing, say, messaging and other services and impacting the, I think actually impacting the relationship the operators have with their customers. And I think Apple is a great example of that, where you have to question whether the subscriber or the customer's relationship is with, say, the operator or actually is with Apple. I think that's something that the operators are really struggling with at the moment. So if we take, let's move forward with this model a bit just to see where it goes. Um, again, this, this is also information taken from the same report. 
um, and we've added little bits to it as well. But we can see in his report he re references an Ericsson thing showing how the, the voice, voice traffic in terms of total capacity is now being outstripped by data. And I've got a more extensive chart of that later in a two slides time. Some of the interesting parts on this slide really I find are what three in the UK commented on about their traffic. So 90% of their network load, but it only generates 30% of their, their actual revenue. Three in the UK, for people who aren't familiar with the UK market, is slightly different from the other operators. They only have a 3G network. They came into being as basically a data-centric network, and that's what they drive. Uh, and they had very nice data packages. Um, okay. And then the US market, Personally, I saw the US market in terms of mobile technology years and years ago being laggards and being very slow, uh, partly because of how they charge their, op their subscribers. You know, pay to receive a call is never really going to generate people wanting to use their phones. Big change in their market. They are pushing LTE, and we can see they're claiming 85% of their traffic is data, but only 39% of that generate. Sorry, only 39% of their revenue comes from that level of use. Um, so that must be a big worry. The other one that came out um, m talking forward is this is driving them to a utility model. So basically a bit pipe. And I can see that that, again, who's got the relationship? So what can operators do to enhance their relationship with their customers? And also, an important one will be, how can you get revenue from that data pipe? Because if they can't crack that, they're, they're going to go out of business or have serious hits on their profits. The one thing in their favour is lots and lots of reports are reporting that the LTE type or IP networks reduce their cost tremendously over the digital networks. So their margins aren't being eroded as badly as you would first appreciate on there. At the bottom right hand curve here is, a very, again, Shatin did this one, very much about um, cost per byte effectively. Now, on the later slide, I don't have the figures, but I'll tell you how we calculated this worldwide. Um, just to give you an idea of the general impact and how data is being charged relative to other services. Okay, so if I move on to slide six, um, now this one is a, a combination of a, quite a number of data from um, different areas. So the top slide, well I'll start at the bottom left hand corner. So if we move the model forward that we saw the capacity of the networks, what we've done here is the green is the data that's reported in lots of reports. That's combined and sort of averaged of about three reports. We can see it's really taking off, not news to anybody. The blue is the capacity of the voice. Now, to do that one, we've basically worked out roughly how many voice minutes are done in the world and what sort of um, bytes that would equate to. So we can argue over whether it's that thickness or a bit thicker, but it's about right. And if you can happen to see the red line, that's the traffic or the the bandwidth required in their networks to carry SMS traffic. Other data services I've put into the green area. The top graph there is from um, Analysis Mason and also backed up by other people. And that's the revenue that the operators have now and are going forward. So we can see that um, voice doesn't use a lot of their capacity, big part of their revenue, and not dropping off as people were claiming. I'm a bit surprised it's not fading in terms of percentage more than it's shown there. Um, the red messaging, well, that's considering how much bandwidth they're using. When we did this analysis, it did actually shock me how much it was relevant to it. And then we can see the green, although it's going to consume a huge amount of the capacity, the investment that's going into their networks, it's not generating much revenue for them. So one question is, could you use real-time charging to try and enhance that experience of the customers, encourage the customers to pay for premium services or control their usage through charging along with policy. And that's what we'll come on to with the example we'll show later in the slide pack. Okay. Um, the, so I mentioned earlier about Shatin's view of how much you get per, how much revenue you generate per, per byte. So I did a simple calculation that's not shown on this chart, but I'll verbally explain it. Basically, we divided the revenue by the bandwidth to get dollars per byte for voice, and then we divided that into the same figures for the other. And if you do that, basically, SMS traffic generates two and a half times the revenue per byte than voice does, and the data is 0.1. So 10% does 
uh, if you like, of the value. So every byte that is transmitted over data is 10% the value of the equivalent voice byte. And that's dropping as well with time. So I think it starts out at 20% today and about 10% by 2015 in this model that you're seeing here. So that really is um, quite a dramatic change in their business plans that they're going to have to face as operators. Unless they can get you know, services being charged for over-the-top services, um, which we're starting to see. I mean, Vodafone in the UK are pushing into the medical space for services. They set up a division for doing that. Um, where they've got a team trying to do telemedicine effectively. That's one of the big areas that people are looking at in the UK. Um, so let's take a, an operator view as well of what's going on. So this was a report um, from Telecoms Int Intelligence, and I'll give credit, it was sponsored by OpenNet, so that people are aware. Um, they basically did a survey and found out what the operators feel. One of the feedback, one of the key feedbacks here, and you'll see why this is important later in the presentation when we turn on to real time, is it's the postpaid impact. So they believe, you know, should their postpaid systems have real-time capability? The answer is um, yes. On the top right, do they have it? The answer is no. Now, there's lots of debates about that, but we can see people have been using this as a way to try and push convergence uh, and other approaches like that. Very expensive, very long time to put systems in. So a systems approach is, can we add a, a lower cost solution to their existing postpaid system? Uh, and the example later will show you where we've done this. Um, to enhance the experience, to give them real-time capability, bill shop control, flexibility in hybrid accounts. Um, and then I think the nice one actually on this chart, the one that uh, is the bottom right-hand graph, where we're seeing things that people view as being quite important. So loyalty point and control of loyalty points, those are external systems, collect the data, analyze the data, feed back into the systems, that's okay. Communication directly with customers. I think here there are two, two points. One is general communications, but also letting the systems let the customers know what their plans are, what their spend is. Um, I think one of the reasons that people are very careful about using data systems is people don't generally appreciate what a megabyte is, what a gigabyte is, what it will give you. Uh, we've done surveys here in the office. Uh, Maria, our head of, head of marketing, she did one where we went out to international and asked around the world, and it's quite surprising how few people understand what a download of a uh, um, music track is, what a download of a video actually means to people. And while people don't know that, they're very reluctant to do it. Um, just like when in the early days of voice, people were very worried about voice. Once people associated how much a minute costs, people are much better. Uh, bundling, we can see people pushing bundling in all their systems. And actually, I can see on a real-time system, if you're very good at bundling, you can mimic post-paid packages. Uh, and you'll see some examples as we move through this. Um, and shared balances or bundles. So that's where people pay for one sort of service and a number of people can use it. And I've got an example later. Tiered pricing, they claim, is important. Um, I'm surprised if no billing systems don't do tiered pricing already. Um, that's been around for a long time. So a um, quick slide here on benefits of real-time charging and balance management. Notice I've added balance management into this because I think people understanding their balance, not just their spend, is quite important. From an operator, well, bad debt. Bad debt, people not paying their bills, it's a big problem. Um, somebody who doesn't pay, recovering that margin means you sometimes have to gain about 10 times the margin, standard type business models there. Uh, it will improve customer loyalty. You know, I know what I'm spending. I feel I'm in control. Um, so I'm less likely to move away. Removes bill shop. So again, the operator less likely to le lose their customers through them being upset about the bills. Uh, potential to reduce customer care costs. Right? An important one here is good real-time systems can allow people to, say, send an SMS in or through web self-care, look after their own account, buy new bundles, check their balances. Our system can generate notifications of certain spend levels or certain levels in bundles, so people all the time are aware of where they are. What are the benefits to subscribers? They can control their spend. If people are aware of what they're spending, they're actually likely to spend more because they don't feel they're going to get a shock. Um, it will also help people educated so that they can learn what a dollar means in terms of buy, what service do I get for the money I spend. Once people are educated like that, more likely to use it. Greater transparency, less likely to complain to the operator. Again, that could affect customer care as well. 
Um, and I've got an example in this where you could actually take real-time charging with bundling forward to allow customers to basically customise their own tariff plans in a controlled way. So the operator doesn't lose control, but they vastly reduce their costs on looking after their tariff plans. And then clearly the mutual goal here is want to get subscribers confident in the system and get them to use more services. Um, I'm going to skip slide nine because I've come to most of those as we've been talking, but that one's for people to look at uh, if you get a copy of the pack just to see where we're going on the next few slides. Now, the next few slides, I'm going to do three slides which show um, how Ascision has actually, we've actually done this, where we can put a real-time rating engine into an existing system to enhance the capabilities. Now, you'll see on these charts that we call the real-time rating engine ACE or Ascision Charging Engine. Um, and that really is the real-time component that we add into a system. Th this component actually is capable of doing a complete prepaid or convergence rating, but in these cases we're just going to use it for adding real-time capability to a system. So slide 10 is the first example where we're adding real-time capability to a postpaid system. Um, and what I've shown here is that it handles, in this first one before I put the animation on, it's actually handling all the services, so voice and data. You could choose, very simply, not to do voice, because people are happy with voice. Leave voice for a postpaid user as it is. They're not so bothered about their spending on voice. They tend to understand it. But what we can see here is we can route the um, data traffic, both SMS, MMS, um, web traffic, content traffic, through the real-time entity, and then feed the information where it's been rated, charged, controlled, onto the postpaid system. Um, and that way people can buy bundles on the real-time rating engine, use those, and get all the, real, the advantages that prepaid people have of all the information about their system. The animation now just shows that actually... Oh, sorry. No, I can't, oh, okay. The animation doesn't show it, but oh, it does, yes. Yeah. So in this case here, after the animation, you can see I've taken off the CDR tract. So there's the CDR tract from the services, uh, the voice and the data, CDR traditionally through to a postpaid system. Animation takes that off, and there we can just see it just through an ACE platform. I would say typically in uh, an application like this, you would not put the voice through the uh, adjunct charging system here. Uh, it's the data that people are more worried about. Um, the next slide is basically enhancing an existing prepaid system. Again, we've done this uh, in a number of accounts, where we've added the... A charging engine onto the system to take certain services. So somebody makes a sub subscribe for a certain service and then our platform takes it and we've got an example of that that's very successful in, in Asia. Um, but a lot of the traffic stays the same. The advantage here is older prepaid systems, probably very expensive to upgrade, very expensive to replace. You could add a very low, low cost charging engine on, onto it, take some traffic load off it, uh, add some capability for specific services. So again, a very much a niche target play for where people need a specific service. Uh, and the final one of these is a hybrid account, and this will be the main example that we use later, whereby we get the uh, charge engine to work with both the prepaid and the postpaid system um, to enhance it. So here, it could be used just to give real time for the postpaid, it could be used to do uh, new features for the prepaid users, it could also be used, and the example we'll give later is where a postpaid user buys service on the real-time rating engine, ACE in this case, that prepaid users and postpaid users can both use at the same time. So what I will call that is that's a true hybrid. Um, and I have a very detailed example of that, which will form quite a lot of the rest of the presentation as we go through, because I think that really highlights how real-time rating engines can be used in these circumstances. So the next slide is a lot of animation on it, so I will go slowly, uh, and I probably expect questions coming as I go on this one. So let me explain first of all, um, this is a real live uh, system that's working at the moment, uh, and I'll let you know who the operator is later in the presentation. Um, what we've done here is uh, we put ACE into their network, uh, initial deployment, it also worked with their prepaid system, but we've now turned the prepaid system off and all their prepaid traffic is now on ACE. And that's why it's portrayed like this. But ACE is also linked into their postpaid system through CDR feed and uh, open API to send commands each way. What the packages are, and there's a multitude of packages, so this is just one of them, is the first um, application of this 
was for the operator wanted their, the parents of children or students to be able to pay for a phone but control their bill shock exposure. So what they wanted was a set of services on the ACE platform that they as their father or mother paid for but their child would use. And what they chose to do here is they wanted a, a certain amount of data, a certain number of SMS, a certain amount of minutes, uh, and then they also had a cash balance as well. Um, and the parent would pay for the bundles that are in green here. The blue is a standard core balance on a prepaid system that requires voucher top-up or electronic top-up that the child would have control. The, uh, and I'll explain some of the things about the bundles. But how the system works is, um, at the start of each month, um, ACE refreshes the packages, loads them all up to the full extent. So that's the start of the period, so it could be the start of the month or whenever they decide to uh, run their billing cycle. Um, ACE then controls the account. So the first animation shows that the subscriber used some services. The bundles are used up. Uh, in this case, they've used services that are all applicable to the bundles. No core credit's been used. At any stage, the, um, the person with the phone, so the child, can send them. Uh, in this case, they use, they use USSD. You could use SMS. Send in an SMS or USSD, and it tells you the balance of each of those bundles, so how much you've used. There are limits set on the bundles in terms of notification levels, and we tended to set them at about 80% use in this particular case. So when the bundle's being used up 80%, 20% less, you'll see what happens in a minute. So that's the first example, first part. The second part, the subscriber now uses some service that is not part of the bundle, uh, part of the core of the bundles. So we can see here the core credit's gone down. So the parent hasn't paid for that. That's come off the um, top of. So maybe the parent didn't want to pay for music downloads, didn't want to pay for international calls. That comes out of the core credit. It's not using the bundles. Um, the subscriber then uses more service, and the bundles go down. In this case, it's gone through a limit. Balance notification is sent from ACE to the subscriber to say, you know, your bundle is uh, below a certain level. You could then use that notification to say, do you want to buy another bundle from your core credit to add that add back, say a data bundle, maybe offer it at a lower rate, things like that, which is what this operator is actually doing. Um, and then what we can see, the next animation shows you what happens at the end of the month, is at the end of the month, uh, we clear the balances, refill the bundles, um, and we also then, um, the postpaid system sends out the bill to the parent, so that's fine. And then the postpaid system, which is already in the incumbent postpaid system, set up to do all the dunning and collection processes, um, the, the account continues being used. Supposing the parent doesn't pay within the allotted time level, and then we can have one command from the postpaid and we can wipe the bundles. So the child you lose, loses the bundle service, but we do not touch the core credit. So their phone is still active, they can still complain to their parents to say, please, would you pay your bill? Um, but they still have use of their phone. Um, we did set the system up. Other options here were uh, we wouldn't refresh the bundles until the bill was notified, but the operator in this case was wanted to refresh. Um, and um, I'll just come on to some bundle capability. Um, I'll go back to the bundle capability in a minute um, just to explain in detail. Now, I'll let you know who this is. Um, this was by Setar, and that was their first challenge, was to try and control that hybrid type account for their subscribers. Um, since it's been deployed, they're now up to 20% of their new subscribers are all on this system, uh, and they're looking at transferring all postpaid users over to it. Not their corporate users, their postpaid users. So they all get real time for data. They're not doing voice for their postpaid users. They'll still do it otherwise, but you can see that there are bundles on voice for this system. Um, so that was a fairly simplistic overview of what Setar's doing. I'll give you some highlights of some of the other things that those bundles that they've got can do. So the bundles we set up on the system for Setar, and it's generic to our platform, so anybody who uses our platform has got access to this capability, is we can re restrict the bundles to time of day, day of week, destination, and lots of other features. In the operator's case here, anything that was in that package I showed you they um, controlled them for certain times of day. So during school hours, certain services were denied. They controlled it so that no international calls were allowed from the bundles. Um, and that's what they were doing. We also set the system up, and it was a bit complicated to show in an animation, but actually the bundles do roll over for one month. 
So what's not used in month A can be used in month B with priority over what is added in B. Uh, that adds quite a bit of complex complexity to it. Um, outside the package, what the operator's also done is they've got a whole set of bundles um, for voice, SMS and data that the subscribers can separately purchase. And they've set those um, at quite interesting levels, actually. So what they've done as a, as a package, anything that's part of the, um, <coughs> the package that's paid for by postpaid actually goes, or oh, we've done all the rating in there to be postpaid level. Anything that they buy is sort of midway between postpaid and prepaid. If they don't buy bundles, it's just a prepaid rating thing. And that's the sort of level of charging capability that particular system's got. Um, the other one that they're using um, is our group capability. So on the system, we've got um, something that really is appropriate for families and small businesses and that sort of approach. And we call them, call them closed user groups or open user groups. Um, by close, we mean you name a set of people in your account. You can buy a bundle, say, of SMS or voice. And if, say, they ring each other or they send an SMS to each other and they're in that group, then that service is charged to that bundle, not to their own accounts. Um, again, you can do time of day, day of week, set all the premises on those bundles. Um, you know, one example we were discussing with people here is maybe you could use that something like a security firm or a taxi firm where the taxi drivers are all in the bundle um, so they can use their own phones. So you're not going to buy people phones so they can ring in and the company pay for that bundle but don't pay for any calls outside of that. And that can be done. Um, the open user group is more flexible. It means that uh, somebody pays for a service and that is for those people to use services either amongst themselves or actually outside the group as well. And that's all done in real time. So there's no waiting for it. You can see the bundles going down. People can send SMSs. The owner of the bundle can see where they are and can see them going down in real time. That is a real time group account control. Now, before I go on to the, the uh, next example, I was just going to spend a few slides giving a bit of an insight into where real time rating really with bundles could be taken in to uh, not an extreme case, but if you start moving can we do postpaid in real time and the sort of interactions so so this slide is um, something that actually we, we took off the three network in UK they used to have a similar type package on their um, on their website for people and what you do here what we're saying here is say you did a top-up like in the setar case you put some money onto your account you could then decide so the bundles that the operator could define on the system they could then choose a set of bundles uh, to go with, so they could choose some talk minutes, uh, some text bundle, internet TV, um, and internet access there, uh, and then that's their package. The decision system means you can actually define a package like that, and they can buy the package in one go rather than buying individual bundles, so we can do that as well. And um, The beauty about that one is it gives the um, subscriber the ability to actually effectively define their own tariff plan. And that's something that's, especially in the UK, in the last two or three weeks, there's been a lot of press announcements about subscribers really wanting to be able to control their tariff plans, complaining that they can't, they're stuck with what the operator gives them. So immediately, uh, as an operator, I can see somebody thinking, that's very complex, it's going to cause me a lot of problems. So let's look at how a real-time rating engine with lots of bundles could do. So here's, on slide 18, this is just a hypothetical advanced, uh, example. Number of bundles here, I think there's 17 bundles here, I've defined here, something like that. Uh, let's run an example of somebody buys some bundles and they, they fill their little customer choice, you know, and that's their package for, the, for that month. They could turn it into a package for the, going forward. What does that mean to the operator? Well, the customer has 1,728 options from that 17 bundles. Try doing that with tariff plans. You know, we know tariff plans are like millions of lines of code. If you could do this and control those bundles, you may have one tariff with basic tariff in and force people to use bundles. You know, the advantage of the customer is um, they can choose their package, they can tweak it depending on you. So if one week they're heavy on data, they can enhance their data. One week they want voice, use voice. The operator can carefully set those bundles up so that they encourage use. You know, you analyze how much people are using, set the bundle a bit beyond that, charge a bit more, get a bit more revenue. It's very known that most bundles are never used up. Uh, there's only something like 10% of users ever actually exhaust their bundles. So it's a way of actually falsely inflating your tariff, your, your ARPU, by the bundle not being used. Um, and then what I'm also shown here is, uh, now, this is um, 
this is how the decision platform works. Not not sure that other platforms do the same. We can create bundles in well, less than an hour, really, if you really want to, quite quickly. And then here, what I've shown here is we've got, say, five tariff plans. So for child, youth, adult, senior, citizen, and foreign worker. Um, this actually is a real, real case. Uh, Setar have done this. And basically what you do is you can share the bundle. So if we create a bundle on the system, it can be shared amongst different tariff plans. So here you can see is by changing the, ch changing the bundles that are available on that tariff plan, they can change their package. Those tariff plans, the base underlying tariff plan, might be exactly the same for all those market segments. And just by changing the bundles, quickly, easily, test them, launch them the next day, they can respond quickly and it's a lower cost way than rewriting your tariff plans as you go. Um, the other one about this is you can respond to competition very quickly. So if somebody changes their plan, maybe gives more SMS for the same value, you can change the bundle value or put a new bundle on to encourage or compete very quickly. So you can be very market sensitive and market responsive here. Right, now I'm going to use, uh, so that was an example of, um, really that was data focus. We have got an example of a, a voice system where we did a, an adjunct system for voice. A lot more complicated deployment, this one. Uh, and this was mimicking virtual uh, landlines, so virtual landlines, and it's a case in Asia. Um, it's a widely published case to study this. Um, the company is Globe in the Philippines. Um, Globe are a company who have, um, their government has given them licenses for landline, but they don't actually have any landline capability. So they really wanted to mimic landline um, performance. Uh, there's also the thing in, in the Philippines that if people ring a landline number, it's cheaper than ringing mobile to mobile. So this was to try and reduce churn by stopping people moving to other ones um, and address the fixed line market without actually entering it. Um, so what they wanted to do was basically allow the phone to look like a landline when it wasn't in certain areas and constrict it by a zonal application. Um, so I'll go on to the next slide to show what they're actually um, there is. Now, this is how it actually, this is what their marketing plan was. So if a mobile person in a specific zone rung um, uh, anybody outside the zone, it was a normal rate, normal phone call, uh, and it's a mobile charge. If it was within the zone, then it would be, well, they say free here, but you have to subscribe, or mobile to mobile. The trick about the system here is um, when the mobile rings somebody within the zone, it gives a landline number on your display. And in this country, that is more likely for people to ring back or accept the call because it's a landline, so it's cheaper. And that was the aim of this. Now, how they did it, because it's not free, uh, everybody says free, but it wasn't, but uh, what do they do is, so they allow people to subscribe for one day, 30 days, five days, or 14 days, and you paid a subscription, you got the landline number, and if you did a call within that area, it was a landline-to-landline -landline call. Um, once you subscribe to the system, it allocates you the name and everything, and then put you onto the ACE platform. Um, and then you can make calls going forward. Um, <coughs> this, is, this slide shows actually the actual network, very schematic, uh, and I've removed the names of the other um, NEPs that supplied their billing systems. In Glow, um, at this time, they, ha they wrote their own postpaid system, so Ascision had to link into their postpaid system so that we could handle postpaid users who could subscribe onto the system. And also, they have two different prepaid systems from two different NEP suppliers, so we had to integrate with both of those. So, uh, and we did this work in a very close collaboration with Computaris, which is another reason for using this example. Um, so, quick quick slide here shows what we did. It was, it was four months from discussion to launch, and what we do here is, when the call comes in, the decision platform uh, sees the call coming in, it receives the call, we then check through the decision location gateway, so that was something to try and find, that's a, a product that was totally developed for us by Computaris, um, to look at where people are, map the zones, work out where they are, feed the information back to say to ACE whether they were uh, in the right zone or not, then ACE would take over. If they were in the zone, the ACE platform would control the call. Um, if they were not in the zone, the ACE platform would reroute the call back to the other systems, either to the prepaid system for real-time control or treat it as a normal one and send the CDR to the postpaid system for later uh, reconciliation in the bill process. Um, 
I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah. Uh, this is. The, I must stress. This is. This was done for um, um, voice only in this situation. Okay. What were the results? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to read through this, but basically, Globe announced this. Uh, quite, it's about two years ago now. Uh, they're claiming that it was the first true hybrid account in their region in terms of handling prepaid, postpaid subscribers on one system, uh, doing one sort of service for people. Uh, the interesting thing about this that wasn't published was the impact it had on their competitors. So Globe um, in the Philippines is a great deal of churn, generating new SIMs is a measure of how their business is going. Um, feedback from the market said that for when this was initially launched for two or three months, uh, Globe's competitors saw well, 20% or more drop in activity in terms of new subscribers coming onto their networks. So it had a big impact in the market in terms of hurting Globe's um, competitors um, and impacting their revenues, their new, new subscribers. Um, clearly, the, their competitors are trying to combat that with lower prices and things like that. I think the system now has somewhere in the region of 700,000 subscribers on board. Uh, it's still using the system and still working away with it. So that's <clears throat> that's the end of the um, that example. One question that people always ask is, well, how can that be cost effective? So um, I'll give you an example. I'll give you some sort of feedback on the sort of performance of an decision platform, just to give you an example of um, where we've got to with this system. So um, and this is a complete platform. So if we take a, a seven uh, seven blade system, half height blades, so in this case HP Proline's G7 blades at the moment, so you get an idea of the performance. So I'm not trying to say how you know how big it can go, I'm just saying for that sort of cost to put in those sort of blades, we can handle about seven million seven million subscribers in terms of real time rate and charging for voice and data calls. If it's purely data, it's more. If it's heavy on voice, it's less because of the way the traffic. And that would include us doing real time rating and charging and balance management, all the bundling capabilities, the group bundles. Uh, customer notification, and if a customer inquires about their accounts, what their balance is, where they are. So, you know, if you compare that to replacing four systems, which, you know, we also do, we're replacing the prepaid system currently, you know, to put an adjunct system in like that is an order of magnitude less cost. It also means to an operator, you know, with the way the world's going, do you really need to change your postpaid system if it's doing your dunning process and all your uh, BSS systems quite okay? Maybe putting something like this in front of it would give you the necessary capability, the feature set that you need at a fraction of the cost. You know? And that's the question, you know, where an operator's got a prepaid and postpaid systems that are genuinely end of life, then it's almost a no-brainer, you're going to go convergence. If they're out of sync or you don't want to go through that whole um, proposal of ripping and replacing everything, this sort of adjunct approach is very viable. Um, we're not the only company who is pushing this sort of approach. Um, and it also means that if you really wanted to, you could use this rating engine <coughs> in combination with like policy engines to control policy. Now, on our platform, we've got the GX interface coming very shortly, so we could do a, a, a rating and policy in one engine. And at the moment, we, we can work with different policy engines as well, so that like PCRFs in the data frame, data area. Um, and then that concludes what I was going to say today. So I've been. A bit under the hour, but if there's any questions, um, we can take them now if you want to type them, or if not, that's the end of the presentation. Okay, um, okay no one's flagging questions, so... Um, if you want to get in touch, uh, you can get in touch with me either directly through Decision or through Computaris. Um, we speak a lot with Computaris, so that's good. Well, I'll stop presenting now, and um, thank you very much for listening.